Okay, so the today's uh, topic of my discussion, the presentation area is uh, uh, the agile leader. So for the uh, success of agile, so most of the agile leaders, you know, so they always, uh, they are responsible in leading the teams and they are responsible, jointly responsible in uh, uh, getting the success. So the mess, the main theme of my topic is whether they spend most of the time in uh, developing the people or they should spend most of the time in delivering the solutions okay so th this is a, a main uh, theme of the topic okay so i have some slides which are in the certain slides in the pizza kucha's concept okay some slides keeps changing automatically and some slides keep uh, they remain stagnant so how many of you know what is Picha Kucha concept? Okay, so the so okay so for the benefit of others who do not know what is Picha Kucha concept, the Picha Kucha is a Japanese uh, concept where this uh, uh, animation or for interaction designers they convey the whole concept in 20 slides. Okay, the so each slides remains 20 seconds on the screen and they keep changing automatically. So that, that means when, when the presentation is done in Picha Kucha style, the, uh, each slide the person has to stick for 20 minutes or 20 seconds only. So if he doesn't stick, then automatically they change it to the next slide. So some, some of my presentation is in uh, the Picha Kucha concept. Okay. okay. So whatever I am going to present is uh, out of my own experiences as a coach and a train as a trainer since last uh, six six and a half years okay so the agenda which i'm going to cover is first i'll be discussing what are the current challenges in the agile teams because because of lack of personal leadership style of agile leaders so that i have observed in my experience since last six years okay so that i'll discuss initially first then uh, i will come to what are the different leadership styles so which are available and what kind of uh, leadership style is best suited for agile uh, leadership kind of thing okay so i'll spend some time on that and then i come to what is the uh, my, what is the suggested recommendation based out on my own experience for an effective agile leadership quality okay So in my experience, what I have found is often agile leaders, you know, so the, especially the, let's say the scrum masters, they focus uh, currently in my, uh, more towards the lot of micromanaging and uh, they focus more on delivering the solution because they are jointly responsible for delivering the success. So I have seen good number of uh, agile leaders spend time in delivering the solution. but if they spend more time in developing the people and if they develop a people to develop the solution so that would be more appropriate approach and if they spend most of the time in developing the people then people will develop the solutions okay so though don't, the agile leaders don't have to spend more time in focusing on micromanaging delivering the solutions so that is something which i found is uh, uh, certain thing that is lacking today okay also i see that especially uh, agile leaders who come from traditional uh, project management background so either they have not been able to understand what is the uh, uh, different style of leadership that is required for agile projects either whether they uh, either they have to give uh, one is the lack of understanding of giving the empowerment and autonomy to the team also, I feel there is uh, some sort of a fear among them that, you know, so if we give more control, what happens? So there's, there's some sort of a, a inhibition in such traditional project management uh, people who come from that background. So to give the empowerment and autonomy, okay? So that is something which is, uh, I see there is a major improvement area, okay? And also, I see that, you know, 
the agile teams, they focus on delivering the work, but at the same time, when there is a problem, so they are not able to locate where is the problem, and if there is a problem comes, and how to, what kind of techniques that are available to solve the problem. So just to give you one of my experiences, like in one of the project, so every sprint, they used to have some open issues. And uh, so they reached a certain stage where they could not fix so many open issues and they got accumulated and they reached a such a stage that too many open issues were accumulated. And uh, when the teams, the teams got stuck, what to do next? So then they were supposed to solve the problem, so because they had to proceed further. So when they were asked to solve the problem, so they started uh, looking at uh, tightening the testing activities. So they felt the testing area should, was an area that needs to be improved. But actually, uh, when, when I observed, a lot of people were not aware of even to do as, as root cause analysis. If they had done as root cause analysis quickly, they could have got the real uh, uh, root of the problem. Actually, the root of the problem was somewhere else. Okay? So there's uh, insufficient uh, unit testing was not done. And maybe uh, one of the uh, reasons when they did the root cause analysis that the definition of done was also not identified effectively. Because of this reason, the defects were getting escaped to the multiple sprints. So, so what I see is today, the teams are not taught how to solve the problem, where to locate the problem, and if at all if they locate the problem, how, what kind of problem solving technique like something like 5i approach, mind map, mind map approach, so certain techniques they are not aware. Also I see that, you know, so today many organizations, if the organizations have to survive, so they always live in constant sense of danger, okay? So there is a threat for them that, you know, whether how to, in this, in this competitive environment. So, so organizations have to always show some sort of a steady improvement. Okay, so there's no point in thinking a breakthrough improvement. So, the, so they should show a steady improvement, so that can happen through the continuously if there is a, an improvement uh, visibility. So, and I often see in many agile teams, so the agile teams, they don't take these things very seriously. So keep on spending their time in different iterations, but at the, after few iterations, we really see that there is no a trend of continuous improvements. So the whole idea here is the, the agile teams, they look for breakthrough improvements, some over expectations and different kind of uh, 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 expectations, but actually what is required is if they take one step at a time, if they take each iteration as a learning exercise and identify some improvement areas and taking the retrospective seriously, so they can always show some sort of a steady improvement. And this kind of steady improvement is very important, which always leads for sustainable uh, pace of delivery. So showing the sustainable pace of delivery is important. It's not that in some sprint it's successful and some sprint is not uh, uh, successful. So that is uh, something in some another area where teams, teams are not aware how to uh, go about uh, showing the uh, steady improvement. Okay, so for all this, the personal leadership style of uh, agile leader is, makes, creates a lot of difference. So this agile leader uh, is, help, can help in creating an effective agile teams. Okay, so let me, uh, tell you, explain you certain thoughts of mine uh, about different leadership style. So, so the uh, leadership styles, what I'm going to discuss is inspired from, I got inspired by a book called Managing Excellence by Bradford. So here he talks about the leader can be an expert, leader can be a conductor, leader can act as a developer of a people, okay? So, so let us see what kind of leadership style is more suitable for agile uh, projects, okay? So leader as an expert, so this person, this kind of leadership style is very common for technology kind of roles. So where the person is supposed to know, be expert at the, whatever technology is working on, okay? So this leadership style, the people 
the, the expectation is that person should have more expertise. Okay? And in this leadership style, when the leader is an expert, he is supposed to solve all the problems. Okay, the, all the reportees who are working under this leader, say the, they go to him for the problem and he is supposed to give the solution. Okay? And this kind of leadership style is very effective and will become effective when manager or a person who is leading the team, is, he is supposed to have more knowledge than the report is. So in such situation, this kind of leadership style is uh, very effective. Okay? And this type of leaders, they are always highly focused on their work. They don't focus too much, they don't worry too much about the teams which are report is which, with whom they are working. Okay? So as a result of that, there are certain concerns in this uh, leadership style. So especially in this kind of leadership style, when the people who are working with this type of leaders, their growth is a bit limited uh, because they, most of the time, the leaders take the decision and the leader is an expert and he controls the whole team. Okay? So which is completely against the principle of agile. Okay? And these guys, the, this kind of leadership style, the, as such a leader, when he is an expert, they are all happy. When you leave them alone, they are happy. And they work, and they are quite focused on their work, but they don't worry about other uh, team members. Leader as a conductor is the most common style which we have seen. Okay? So this is like where the coordination becomes very important. Such places, this style is uh, very effective. So in this uh, style, the, the leader as a conductor is going to be the central decision taker. Okay? And uh, he is supposed to coordinate quite a lot of things. Okay? So he will uh, manage multiple teams, multiple individuals. He is supposed to coordinate across all the departments. And sit in this kind of roles, this kind of leadership style is uh, very uh, suitable and very appropriate. Okay? And this kind of leadership style, they become effective when the organization requires, treats the coordination is very much necessary for the peak performance. So when the peak performance is possible only through coordination, then in such situation, this kind of leadership style becomes effective. Okay? And the concerns in this leadership style is that whenever there is some conflict happens in the team, so that it get, the conflict get, tends to get pushed to the bosses and to fix. Okay? So what are some good leader myths? So good leader myths is that the person should be knowing everything, what's happening in the department. So this is a myth. Okay? So another myth is leader should solve all problems. He is like one-stop solution provider, so which is again a myth. So another myth is leader should have expertise in all whatever he is handling, so which is again is not possible from a, any leader. Okay, so these are all good myths. Okay, so let's now come to what is a uh, appropriate leadership style which suits for agile projects. The appropriate leadership style which suits for agile projects is a leader should act as a developer of a people. Okay, so the, the leadership style of an agile leader is such that he should be more as a developer of people. So, so let us see that what are certain things that he will do okay, as a developer of people. So these leaders they always create a teams which are jointly responsible for the success. And they always create an environment where the teams are empowered, okay, and the people have help each other, okay. So they create a sort of a mutual influence kind of behavior. Okay? So, so coming to the certain recommendations, suggested recommendations for when uh, agile leader behaves as a developer of people is that 
the leader when the leader behaves as a developer of people he should provide a lot of autonomy and trust okay so this way this is a fine this is okay i think good number of people know about this but can we expect by giving autonomy the agile teams when let us say the agile teams are new can they start suddenly start delivering everything so and it's difficult to expect teams to become self organized doing themselves committing themselves so as an agile leader when he act as a developer of the people what he should be doing is when the team depending upon the team's formation stage let us say team is in when they are new maybe he should start directing the team more and as he keeps directing them when after some stage the team starts understanding each other and when they start understanding each each other gradually he can move to the role of coaching and he can start change direction uh, rather than self directing he can start coaching the team and support them and once the team starts uh, uh, working together and when they move to a stage where they can jointly work as an effective team then the leader can trust the team and then he he can be quite sure that okay if i give good autonomy now i think definitely people i can i can trust and uh, teams can deliver okay so and they can commit together so it is a culture and it takes time so we, the agile leader when he acts as a leader as a developer of people he can't expect suddenly to become uh, self organized time from the day one so it said he has to spend good amount of time to bringing the team to this level and another thing what i observed is so lot of teams when i coach or when i train i see that they do lot of agile practices so doing agile practices is more of doing agile okay so there is a lot of difference between doing agile and being agile so being agile is more of a agile mindset so the value of the team comes from this kind of the agile mindset what the team exhibits the behavior what the team shows so let's say like example uh, in i have seen like the, they do they understand what is continuous integration but what's next after continuous integration many teams are not clearly aware so the next thing which once the continuous integration is put in place they should be aiming towards continuous delivery so if there is no continuous delivery if there is no frequent releases available from when the agile projects are happening then actually it is not true agile like example it's a facebook uh, facebook does does a code push twice twice a day and uh, if you heard of uh, wordpress in the data in 2010 uh, showed that uh, wordpress used to do 16 product releases per day okay the flickr which was acquired by yahoo they used to have a release every half an hour okay so how these organizations were able to do it so they were able to do only because of continuous delivery so i what i have seen in my experience is people understand continuous integration but the moving up the chain is not happening that's why they, i feel that's one of the reasons why they are not able to see the real agile benefits okay also i see when they do the sprint planning so they use their cost velocity and past performance things like that and they agree on sprints okay these are some product backlog items we do it so and they commit to the product or is it sufficient in if you ask me i feel that it may not be sufficient it's not just agreeing to the sprint go, uh, what are backlog items that can be taken in the sprint maybe it would be better a uh, team to, to have some sort of an objective for that sprint let's say uh, the team is doing a add item delete uh, let, let's say they are adding an item for the wish list for shopping cart functionality and uh, they are uh, developing a wish list and where that add item to the wish list modify the item and delete item to the wish list and assume these three are the three user stories if they just agree on this is not sufficient maybe at the end of the sprint a basic shopping cart functionality will be ready so if that kind of objective is set in the beginning of the sprint so the team is uh, the product owners will get more uh, benefits and also 
that's a, I feel is a true true agile where every iteration or every sprint is a product increment or some sort of value and which goes to the part of a product. So the team should uh, spend more time in identifying uh, the effective sprint objective. Also, not just following agile practices, I also see that if the teams are taught about certain lean approaches, lean concepts, it would be very effective to work in the agile projects. So as a leader, as a developer of people, so he should uh, see that his teams are all taught about the lean concepts. So example, the queue length. If, the, if your queue length is more, it will naturally increase the wait time. So wait times, are all, the queue lengths are bad. So more and more the queue length, it increases the wait time. So the people should be taught how to manage their product backlog queues, okay? And bottlenecks. So bottlenecks always impacts the throughput. So teams should be taught how to identify the bottlenecks and where is the bottleneck and bring down that bottleneck. Like example, let us say three developers and a tester is working on a particular thing. So in that case, what happens is the, when the three developers are developing and only one tester is there, so it keeps on, uh, the developers keeps developing more and whereas the tester is only one person, the he tests less. So more and more developers keeps developing that it increases the bottleneck. So in such situation, it's, it's developing more items is not good. So it's better to manage such kind of activities through the WIP limits. So that is something which the teams can, uh, can experiment and can use in their work. And also, you know, certain things causes delays. The delays are always bad, okay? Like, let us say uh, the time taken for a tester to test the bug uh, from the developer, that itself takes one week. And whereas testing that bug takes just a half an hour. And that one week is a non-valuated activity. So that's a waste. So the team should be taught how to identify the waste. Let's say the, develop, the code is untested and it is not integrated. So that's a waste. So more and more such codes are uh, left like that. It contributes to the waste. And wastes are always creates delays. So team should be taught how to do the, uh, re remove this waste so that the uh, lead time gets reduced. So that, so one of the technique could be like value stream mapping. So if the teams are taught how to do the value stream analysis, okay, that would be effective, okay. And also the agile product development. So many teams are not clear about what is the agile product development requires, okay. So agile, the product development for a well-established organization and product development for a startup is different. The kind of let's say minimum viable product, MVP. So M when the, the MVP, the approach used to, for uh, identifying MVP, MVP for startup will be different from how to go about identifying MVP for well-established organizations. So that kind of, uh, uh, the clarity should be there for the team. So depending upon the situation, they should know what kind of strategy should be used for identifying MVP, okay? So lastly, Finally, I also see that, you know, when the teams are working together as a, in the beginning, they start having good amount of motivation and engagement. But after a few sprints, they lose the motivation. And I have seen that, that there is not a good amount of engagement. So probably because certain sprints, they are not able to see some success. So that leads to the uh, uh, demotivation of the team. So as an agile leader, as a developer of people, it's not just taking, driving the team to go fast. At the same time, the agile leader should take the team together, okay? So that can happen when the agile leader is being with the team. I see a good number of scrum masters, they're not with the team, they work from the desk. So no improvement can be done at the desk, okay? So unless the person sees through the eyes, then only it can happen. So the Scrum masters or agile leaders have to be along with the teams and uh, see that, you know, they take the whole team together. So, so that is 
it about my topic of my presentation. So thank you very much. Okay. Okay, you mean to say that the, the vendor is not agile and the teams teams are agile? Okay. So even let's say we deploy tomorrow, nobody is going to use. It's a it's a dead code in the production. So still, should we just just uh, because uh, you know sake of being agile, should we go and do the, this kind of deployments? So I think so. For, so what that comes to my mind is, so it's always better to have some sort of work agreement in the beginning. So work agreement between the agile teams and the vendors. So these are certain things that needs to be done. Like example, how you identify the definition of done when talking with the product owner and jointly arrive at definition of done. So arrive at some sort of a working uh, agreement so that that is jointly done in the beginning itself and have an agreement. I think that will be a, one of the approaches that one can yeah. use it. Okay. That, that would be the very ideal scenario if that happens. But but let's say for some practical issues and the practical contract uh, contractual issues, that's not happening. So it, it's a taken and it's a little, it's a decision from the higher management that you go ahead your way, let vendor go their way, and they they define that okay they gives you these five things you should be all set. So you take the assumption and you build your system. And then you are forced to do the, you know, go to the production. Yeah, okay. So, is it? Is it? Yeah, I think we'll take, I think sure, the, sure. the next session is going to start. Sure, sure. Maybe we can take it okay. offline. Sure, okay. thank you.